So for me, when you say Todd Haynes, the first thing I think of is, you know, Superstar, which is the Karen Carpenter story told with animated Barbie dolls. And I first interviewed him for Poison. He then went on to make things like Velvet Goldmine, Far From Heaven, Carol. I mean, one of my favorite directors. Script for this by Sammy Birch, story by her and Alex Mechanic, um, set, as you say, 2015, with producer Natalie Portman, because of her production company, is actress Elizabeth, who has gone to spend time with Julianne Moore's Gracie. Um, of course, Todd Haynes worked with Julianne Moore on Safe, which was kind of her big breakthrough role about a woman with total allergy syndrome. And it's a magnificent film. So they've they've kind of been together for a long time. 20 years ago, Gracie had an affair with a teenager, Joe, played by uh, here now by Charles Melton, now 20 years later, so now an adult, to whom she is now married with a family. She had his child whilst in prison, is what we learn from the story. And the story is inspired, again, as Todd Haynes said, by a real-life news story from some time ago, uh, Mary Calatorno, which you can look up if, if you want to. So what happens is Elizabeth starts to get under Gracie's skin. It was interesting that in that interview, Haynes kind of compares the research that she does as an actress to like an, an act of investigation journalism. She starts to imitate her mannerisms. She asks her friends about her. She starts to try to move herself in the same way she does. And she also starts to develop a relationship with Joe because she's kind of imitating the, you know, the life of the character that she's playing. So there's a hint here of the assassination of Jesse James, in which Jesse James says, but played by Brad Pitt, says to the person who ends up being his murderer, and I think that is significant, I don't know whether you want to be with me or you want to be me, I mean, a version of that. So it's a thing about taking on somebody else's persona and what you will then do with it, because a number of her friends say, what are you going to do? I mean, the, she's important to us, you know, and you are handing over the story. We spoke about the journalist and the murderer just recently, that idea that you hand your story over to somebody. There was a, a phrase that you used last week, um, I was talking about uh, repeating history, and you said, oh, there's a famous phrase, isn't it? History doesn't repeat, but it rhymes, which is a lovely phrase. I think the two performances here, Natalie Portman and Julianne Moore, they rhyme. They, there's, a, there's a thing about the way they start to kind of vibrate together, which is marvellous. I also think that Natalie Portman is doing performance in the same way that she was doing performance in Jackie, you know, playing a role. To so see an actress playing a role, playing a role, which mm -hmm. actually feeds into that final scene that you're talking about, which is she's so smart because it's about performance. Uh, the music you're absolutely right about. Um, Marcelo Zavos is sort of doing Michelle Legrand's go-between. And that phrase that, Tom, that Todd Haynes used is that the music puts the viewer into an active state of interpretation. I didn't know that they had played the music on set. That's but, it's amazing, isn't it? But also because the music is da dun da dun da dun da It's got a kind of, it's a thriller sound to it. There's something edgy, it's something, it's those, you know, the, the, the semitones, it's, it's kind of angular, but it's also got this romance. And very much like what happens with Anatomy of a Fall, what the film is doing is saying, how do you feel about these characters? How do you feel about what's happened? Joe is a grown-up, and he seems happy, at least at the beginning of the film. We see that in the long shot, the, sh the shot of them you know, cuddling and talking. Mm. But he has lost his childhood, and his childhood was stolen from him by somebody of whom we hear in that thing says she always knows what she wants. She always knows what she wants. She's unapologetic. In fact... And she's a child rapist. Her argument is, you started it. You know, when they when they discuss it, she's the thing about, you know, we know what the dynamic in that is, but exactly as you say, the, she's, a, she's a child rapist. That's what happened. He was underage. She wasn't. And during the course of the drama, it does a really smart, job of because you know the characters that we're now seeing are they're adults but joe has lost something that he's coming to recognize during the course of this interrogation procedure and yet the film is so uh deft in its footing that that you know you're 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 sympathetic and you're you're engaged and you're and then and then every now and then you do this step back thing hang hang on hang on how how are we at this point you also said people will discuss that that scene afterwards. I think this is a movie that you'll come out of. It immediately needs to be discussed, but it also immediately needs a period of silence. It needs a period to just let it sit for a while. So, I mean, I thought it was terrific because I felt like my, my brain was engaged all the way through. I love the performances. I love the performances. I love the use of the music. And, and when you consider how 
spiky that subject is. And also the, the fact is May, December is such an ironic title because that's the phrase that is usually used for a romance of an old man and a young woman. You know, I didn't know that. Yeah, made a summer romance means you know older partner, but okay. usually if it's referred to in a, it's. I my I, I agree I agree with all of that. I did, and I you have a reservation. I, well, my reservation is I am not. I'm still not a hundred percent convinced that a couple who've gone through that in that relation, which you've just explained, mm. where she has gone to prison, yes. um, would actually agree to have the whole thing unpicked. Again, even if they want to tell a different side of the story, sure. that inviting that into their lives, they must know, must bring this okay. all up again and highlight the original offence. And, and I would just think, I know we have to get over that because otherwise the film wouldn't exist. Sure, sure, sure. I wasn't quite sure. Well, can that. I answer that partly, which is that I think that reference that we made, the, the, the journalist and the murderer has turned up many times in our recent discussions. There is something about the kind of person who actually wants to have their story vindicated. In fact, because that's Natalie Portman's character, she's a television actor, and what she's saying is, um, look, I'll do it properly. Someone's going to do this. And it's either it's either me doing it in this way, or and you can see the sort of seduction of uh, Julianne Moore's character by Natalie Portman, who everyone loves. You know, they all love the TV show that she was in. You know, I love that series, you know. So it's kind of, there's, a, there's an element of threat, which is if I don't do this, somebody else will do it and they'll do it wrong. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? Yeah, and if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.